Hello and welcome back and in this tutorial I'm going to show you guys how to draw a stylistic graffiti character so sit back and enjoy okay then so one of the first things I start with which I start with most of my characters is a circle I just place a circle in the middle of the page and this will give me a rough indication of where I'm going to place the facial features later on down the road after I've placed the circle I then draw a center line going straight through the middle and as well as that a line that goes across like I said before all this is just the foundation shape let, to now let me build upon it so I'll place the eyes the mouth and the nose the two key features I start off with first are the eyes I end up placing the right eye first and it gives me a good center point of where the other features around the face will go so I'm just going to place the eye in the top corner of the divided four blocks we did at the beginning and for this character specifically I'm going to give it a squinted look I want a quite a harsh look or aggressive so you can go do the research yourself on the sort of facial expression expressions you're looking for before you even start the image and that'll give you a good indication of where you're going to put your lines and what kind, what kind of energy you want to put behind your imagery and a quick tip to really make the eyes look aggressive is using the eyebrow and bringing it down towards the center of the line. Um, that really pulls off a cool effect and gives a lot more dramatic, a dramatic look towards the eyes. And I use it a lot in a lot of the pictures. And once the right eye is in place, I'll get a rough gauge of where I'm going to put it. I then move on to the left eye. I like to focus on the, both the eyes first and it just gives me the center point of where the nose will be and how long I want the nose to be or the lips and even the rest of the head proportions so for me personally eyes are the best point and that's naturally what your eyes yourself when you look at a picture are drawn to so I like to put the focus really on there so accentuate the eyes now for the nose I'm just gonna get a feel of the placement so I draw an oval shape and that will be the center of the nose because I like, I like to break the nose into three parts which is the center and the two sides once I draw an oval and put the center I then add two little lines on each side for the nostrils. There's loads of tutorials out there. I can even make some myself about the nose and about the eyes. If you'd like, so, like that, just let me know in the comment section. And once I get a rough placement of the eyes and nose, I then reevaluate how it's going and where I want to take the image from there. So just take a step back now and again, look, make sure you like the right placement, the right size, and then just go from there. Now to really accentuate the aggressive look I'm going for with this character, I'm gonna work on the top of the nose and add a few folds, because if you actually squint up your face, look in the mirror, you'll see that a lot of the lines in the forehead create folds that you can actually use to your advantage to really, like I said, bring more attention to the eyes. Really accentuate the eyes. To me, like even with oil painting or drawing in general, the eyes give a lot away with what's what's actually happening in the image and it's a great way to actually display a lot of emotion so i really am focused on top of the, the bridge of the nose the top of the nose and the eyebrows and the creases in the forehead in these tutorials i'm really just trying to give you a general idea of my thought process step by step and this is the process that works best for me um and i hope you can take a lot from this and now with the left eye, I'm just arching it on the left and then bringing it straight back down towards the center to the bridge of the nose. Because I'm trying to go for that aggressive look, I want to add a few more folds even around the mouth area. So this is a, is a fold that starts on the top of the nose and comes down towards the mouth. Um, it's a crease around the cheekbone you find a lot in a lot of older people. Um, because I want to just have sort of like a snarling face, like I said, that aggressive look, I'm going to add this line in here and just fold it straight up into the where the mouth will be. Now I'm going to start off drawing the lips. The first lip I start with is the top lip, and I'm just going to draw a triangle shape going towards the right, and the corner of the mouth should line up roughly where your centre line was to begin with. And after I've done the top lip, I'm then going to start working on the bottom one. Um, with this character, the bottom lip is going to be a little far, I want to extrude it out. So I just do a rounded C shape and bring it in once again to the right of the mouth. Okay, now once you have your three main features in place, it makes it a lot more easier to mold a head shape, the face shape around each of the features. 
So from the lips, like they just drop a line down for the chin. This depends on how big you want to make your chin, but I'm just going to go for a short line, and then also I can figure out the face shape on the left. And I'm also going to add a mustache on this character, so I'm just going to do a left part of the mustache and the right part. It's just two simple dashes that mould around the top lip, like it does in real life. So just um, that's a bit of facial hair. Just put a bit on there. Now that the features are in place, I can use the start and circle to start to mould where I want the face to sit. Obviously I'm going to start on the bottom jawline, which is actually just a line receding back towards where the ear will later be. And on the left side of the face, I'm just trying to use that curve from the first circle we started with to bring it in and mould it towards the lips. So from the left eye, I sort of push out, which is the cheekbone, go down and then bring it in towards the lips. And that will give me a real nice face shape for this sort of character and depending on the position your character is actually facing the shape of the face will change um, you can look at references on Google Pinterest is amazing to look for references just find the position you want and use some of the basic shapes and bring it into your own artwork here I'm just going to speed up a little because I'm just picking up the jawline and just looking at where my face sits and putting in the line work Now once I'm happy that the face is where I want it to be at, I'm just going to place the ear up at the top right side of the face. Um, to do this one I'm just going to do a nice C shape, a nice rounded C shape, that will be the out, outside of the ear. And then for the inside of the ear I'm just going to do a smaller C and that would be the tunnel shape of the ear. And obviously when you shade it in it's going to be very dark and it just gives it more, more um, texture to the ear. Now on this character I'm going to draw it wearing a hat backwards, like a snapback hat styled backwards. So from the ear I'm just going to draw a line coming towards the centre of the head and obviously because it's going to be backwards it's going to have the whole part of the hat facing forward. So here I'm just going to mark out the base shape of the clothes, um, get a good feel of where the head would be. So it would be the same sort of shape as that and then I'm just going to add the hat on top. And obviously the more you practice your characters, the more stylization you can add to him. Um, add certain clothes to give him a different style, different facial features. And this ultimately comes down to just the amount of time you spend practicing. Pencil to paper, pencil to paper, and repetition. It takes a lot of hard work to get a lot of the foundations down. But once you get the foundations down, you start adding the extras, it really starts to make sense. And it really is, that is really what shows the difference between like an amateur and a professional. It's just the details and the foundations. And now it's time to work on the actual clothing of the character and this can change whatever your preference will be but for this I'm just going to give it a buttoned collar so from the neck I'm just going to draw a line downwards to give the collar effect um, and work the fold and bring it back up just to give the whole collar going around the neck. And then from the collar I'm just going to draw the rest of the t-shirt make it fall down. Um, it's actually going to be quite stylized so it's not going to fall naturally. I'm going to add a lot of flow to it, a lot more dimension than it would naturally. Um, and from there, basically I'm going to give it a lot more shape. And um, what you want to do is to study body shape. It's actually study from real life anatomy. Um, the shape of the body, the curves, the dimensions of the actual the real life human body. And from there you can actually change it and manipulate the shapes for different character types. Like some characters people draw they not can have small bodies and big hands or accentuate the torso, um, big chest, small body, small waist. And that really adds a unique style of your own. But first you have to go back to real life and base a lot of your real life references to your actual cartoony character artwork. And obviously the more you practice, once again, the better it becomes. So drawing from life really does start to pay when it comes to drawing characters. Now like I said about exaggerating certain features of my characters, the hands are normally a lot more bigger than they are in real life. So 
first of all the hands are start off with a square shape which is the palm uh, place the thumb which obviously is one of the well was the smallest finger on the hand and then I start to place the other fingers around there but always start off with a, a square overly shape for the palm and build from there hands in themselves are completely different tutorial I have to do a whole lesson on hands and if you'd like to see that tutorial let me know in the comment section just write down hands <laughs> give me some hands and then um, I'll be happy to do so but practice once again practice goes a long way but for my characters personally the hands and the face itself actually make a lot of the character and you can describe so much through the hand gesture or how tense they are so really practice that skill and for the right hand I'm doing the exact same as the left starting off with that square shape for the palm this one obviously is going to be facing downwards so palm will be down adding the thumb and the fingers in whichever way I wish here I just want them to be pointing out I'm just sort of giving it quite a relaxed style with the aggressive, aggressive, aggressive face and then I'm just working that in now that I'm happy with my character's base all the sketchy lines are in there I'm going to go over the whole image with a pencil, adding in the darker tones and really solidating the line work. With my line work, I really work on line thicknesses, so thicker lines if it's protruding out and it leads to a thinner line. This adds a lot of depth to each image. As well as that, I'm just picking up the shades now, so any places, the folds like in the, in the eyes or under the chin, around the crevice of the nose, I'm adding my shades now so later on when I colour, all the foundations in for me and it makes it a lot more easier to pick up where I want the colour to fall. To get a good idea of where you want to add the shades, just keep practicing from light sources through photos taken in real life and how the light falls on the face. You can actually take a portrait and add the same light in from that portrait to your character and hit on pretty much all the accuracy of where the light falls. And even around the outside of the face I like to add a thicker line just because I feel like it holds all the features in the face a lot stronger and obviously in graffiti you've got a second line so it's a key line around that line which obviously then pushes the image forward that's something you can add later on down the colouring stage um, but just really think about your line thicknesses thick lines and thin lines make a completely image a complete image completely different than if all the lines were the same thickness at, I remember beginning with art I used to always do the lines one line I used to have like a 0.5 millimeter pen one line the whole way through it looks flat you start adding the thicknesses to bring out the jaw or the eye or the forehead you can really accentuate certain parts you want the viewer to look at look at so just try it on your next image or your next character just play with the line thicknesses and you'll be amazed at what difference you can actually make and in case some of you are wondering why i have a piece of paper under my hand when i draw it's obviously just to prevent smudging Especially with the pencil, when you're doing pencil work and you're doing the thick black lines, obviously it's charcoal and then when you're rubbing your bare palm all over that, you're just smudging it and making a mess. But if you just grab a piece of paper, fold it in half, put it under your, under your hand when you draw, you can avoid that. And from here on out, I'm just going to speed up the actual video because all the bass lines are down. I'm just using my pencil to pick up the bits I really want to bring forward and the bits I want to push back as well as determining where the shades will go like I said the shades are just being laid down so when I get the markers out I can just sort of know exactly where I'm putting them with a lot more confidence than just guessing with the markers because it's a lot harder to get rid of the markers than it is with the pencil line so that's just pre-planning and thinking ahead before coming to the the final image and that's pretty much the end of this tutorial um, if there's anything you feel like I missed out or you'd like to know that I've done this tutorial and you'd like to find it out just please leave a comment in the sec in the comment section I'll, I'll be more than happy to answer any questions you give me or you can meet me over on Instagram at sotep underscore wh and I absolutely love bringing you guys these free tutorials honestly it means a lot that I can give you something and I really hope that I can teach you something you learn something from this um, but also if you'd like to support me I also have a Patreon which I'll also link in the bio in the description that's completely up to you um, that's just to help me out but apart from that the greatest reward I get is from showing you guys my thought processes and the steps I take to produce each graffiti character and there we have it guys how to draw a graffiti character 
Um, I really hope you got a lot from this tutorial. Any questions, leave in the comment section. Until next time, I'll see you later.